Welcome to the SOB Radio Show, where we have fun, interesting guests, and hot topics. Each week, we offer insights into music, fashion, health, fitness, and humor. Do you have the perfect guest for us to interview? I want to know. Drop me a line on our Facebook page at Spunky Old Broad 1, or reach out to me on our website at SpunkyOldBroad.com. And now, back to the show. Hi, everybody. This is Gail Carson, and believe it or not, I am going to be your guest today. I thought you might be interested in some of the things that have been happening in my life lately and that you'd be interested in some of the things that I'm starting to do that are new. I'm uh, very excited about this new phase that I'm going into. Some of you know that I've been uh, very active getting on TV and so forth, and I've got a new course called Get On TV, so if any of you are interested in learning how to get on TV or what's involved and the things you need to be aware of for it, um, I'd be wonderfully happy if you got my new course, Get On TV, which I'll tell you about in a little bit. But I thought I'd, I'd give you a, a, a little idea of what's been going on lately. I just came back from a celebrity entrepreneurship event in uh, New York City at Carnegie Hall. And although we had some fabulous, fabulous speakers, we had Martha Stewart, we had Ice Tea and Coco, we had uh, Jerry from Ben and Jerry's, we had uh, Walter O'Brien, I don't know if you know who he is, but he is known as Scorpion. And if any of you remember the TV series from a few years ago, Scorpion, uh, he is considered the most, uh, really the smartest man in the world. I think he said his IQ is 196. Somebody told me that's impossible. But that's what I understand it to be, and he is brilliant, I will say that. We also um, had Dylan Howard, who's the head of all these uh, magazines, including the National Enquirer, who's written a book about uh, Diana uh, called Case Solved. But anyway, there were many, many uh, people there. But one of the most interesting people that I met was Michael Gerber, who you know as the author of The E-Myth and The E-Myth Revisited. And uh, Michael was on stage and talking about, oh, just a whole bunch of things and giving advice on how to operate a small business. And he said he was 83 years old. Well, of course, you most, most of you know I'm 81. And so I thought this was really neat. And when I got to talk with him and to really get a picture with him, I said to him, I'm so glad you said you were 83 because I'm 81. And that was our whole conversation. That was really the bulk of it. It was really interesting. And that was it. And everybody, you know, there were like, I don't know, 250 people there after me telling him all these things. So uh, we went on. A couple days later, two days later, uh, the coffee shop in the hotel I was staying at was closed and I wanted to get just maybe a, some toast and, and glass of milk. I'm not a coffee drinker. And so I went to a fresh market that was like two doors away and I'm pumping the milk because they don't they didn't have like little cartons of milk. And all I wanted was a cup of milk and I'm pumping the milk and pumping the milk and pumping the milk. And then I see a guy standing next to me who's pumping the coffee and it's Michael Gerber. And I said to him, Michael, I said, I'm Gail Carson. I said, I met you at the uh, event we're at. And he said, yes, I remember you. I said, I'm the one that said I was 81. He says, I remember that too. And so um, uh, he said, how are you? And I said, I'm fine. And um, he said, well, I've got to go. And I said, I've got to go too. And I went back to the hotel and sat in the lobby to eat my, uh, my uh, croissant and my milk. And who sits down right across from me but Michael Gerber. The interesting thing was he said that he really enjoyed meeting me because he thought I was real. And maybe I was real because I admitted how old I was, and most women don't want to do that. But um, we had a really nice conversation. And then he asked me if I knew his wife, and I said, yes, I had met her. And he said, well, what did you think? And I said, well, I asked her what it was like living with you. And then he said, what did she say? And I told her, told him the answer. But the whole point of this is he said, I really like you, Gail, because you're real. And uh, he asked me for my card, and he said, I'd like to get you and my wife together. And, of course, who knows if it'll ever happen. But I just thought that's an important lesson for all of us to know. There's no sense pretending that you're something that you're not or you're, you're someone who you're not. Just be upfront with everything that you do, and you'd be surprised at the great results that come of it. Uh, and so I was really impressed with the people who spoke to us because they were they were really real. And even Ice-T, who I had no idea 
what to expect from him. Uh, he was delightful. And it's interesting, his wife, Coco, runs the business. He's the talent. She's the, the one that runs the business. And uh, he has done so much for so many people. And it's just really interesting to see what these stars, who are genuine, and no matter where they came from, because you remember he started out as a gangster rapper, uh, is now doing. And he said, I wouldn't leave Law & Order for anything. He said, it's a wonderful gig. And he said, it's a steady income. And... Uh, he said, I, I really enjoy doing it. So I think the lesson from all of this and all the people that, that talked to us and that I met and so forth is the fact that just be authentic. I think authenticity is the word that's overused much of the time today, but it really is important to be authentic with the people you meet. There are so many people that are trying to put on a show, trying to be someone who they aren't, and it just is really important to be authentic and the real you. So why am I doing this TV course? Now, there's a couple ways you can do this, folks. You can take it online. Uh, it's an online course that's very easy to understand and easy to follow. It's done in five and six minute modules. So it's not something that you have to, uh, you know, you have to absorb in hours and hours of time. It gives you the chance to uh, look at each thing individually and understand it and practice it and so forth. So you can do it that way. Or if you want to do it in person, I have these what are called VIP days. And you can come to me and we can spend a day or a day and a half. And we'll get your script down because it's important that you learn how to get it down. All you're going to have on TV is three minutes. So that's it. You've got to get your message out in three minutes. You've got to make sure it's to the right people, the right media. I have been turned down for TV interviews because I was talking to the over 50 crowd and uh, their demographic was younger. So there was really no reason for them to have me on. And that's certainly understandable. There were other people that were mortified by the fact that I was known as an SOB, a spunky old broad. So you've got to make sure that your message is, is to the right group. But we'll do that for you. In other words, we'll formulate your message. We'll get your three points out. We'll make sure that it's done in that three minute time frame. We'll show you how to use props. We'll show you how to uh, get in touch with what we call the segment producer. We'll show you how to put together a segment proposal. All of the things that you need to do to get on television. Now, understand something. None of this is easy. Just because you take the course, it doesn't guarantee that you're going to be on. Just because you do a great segment proposal or you get in touch with the producer doesn't mean that you're going to be on. There are people that I have done segments for that really like me. I mean, they really do like me. And it still takes me seven, eight, nine times of trying to get in touch with them to get back on because they're so busy. They have practically no spare time. They're in very early because these shows go on usually at 7 in the morning until 9. So they're in there early and they're out of there by 9.30 or 10 o'clock. So it's hard to catch them. Uh, I did do a couple of shows that were 4 o'clock in the afternoon, but that's unusual. That's not the way it normally is. So when we talk about those things, that, that's one of the things I'm doing is the TV segment. The other things that I'm doing is something I call reinventing ageism. Uh, many of you out there who are over 50 and think, you know, this is it. You don't have time for anything. There's nothing. Nobody's going to hire you. And you may be right. I mean, just because you have talent and because you've got ability doesn't mean that corporations still think that when you're over 50, you've got something to offer when they can really hire somebody in their early 20s or mid 20s and pay them half of what they would have to pay you. So uh, if you are in a situation where you're reinventing yourself, I think it's important to look at all the aspects that you can do. Maybe you want to do some volunteering. Maybe there's a particular skill that you're good at that you've never thought about utilizing in some way, shape or form as a business or perhaps even as a hobby. But there's lots of things that you can do. So when we talk about reinventing ageism, ageism is just a term. It's how you think. It's how you feel. It's how you act. It's not really a chronological number. And so if you look at yourself and analyze, who are you? What have I done in my life? Uh, what am I excelling at? What have people always told me that I'm really, really good at? What is it that I can, I can bring to someone who 
uh, is looking for that special something. Those are all things that we work on in uh, when I coach women in my either, well, it can be one-on-one -on -one again, or it can be in a group session, but I coach women over 50 to reinvent themselves. That's what it's all about. So if you are interested in something like that as well, then certainly be in touch. And you know, the interesting thing that I'm finding as I continue to go to these conferences and these uh, conventions and these learning sessions and so forth, 90, well, it's a big word, 90. Let's say 80%, uh, 75 to 80% of the audience is normally female. And I would say at least 60% of them, if not more, maybe 60 to 70% of them are definitely over 50. So there are many women out there who are looking for that special something. They're looking for that, that, that thing that will propel them to their next, uh, shall we say, adventure. Because I, I happen to think that uh, it's a great time of life. So that's the other thing I wanted to tell you is that I just think that just because you hit that 50 mark or 60 mark or 70 mark, it's not over. You are so able to do so many things that you haven't even thought about that um, I just wish you would write me. You know, you can always go to my website, spunkyoldbroad.com. You can find me there, and I have a contact form that you fill out, and I respond to all of those contact forms, by the way. Um, or you can email me at gail, G -N, most of you know it's G-A-Y-L-E, gailcarson13 at gmail.com. And I will answer you. I will tell you what is going on and what is happening. And if I agree with something or if I have a suggestion for you, I would be more than happy uh, to, to, to be in touch with you. And if you want to receive communication from me every week, I send out a newsletter every Monday. And uh, it's got the news of the week, what I've done. It's got a philosophy. It's got maybe what I've done in the week, uh, musing, uh, happening. Uh, what my thoughts are, uh, that kind of thing. And it keeps you in touch with what's going on in my life and if anything new is happening. So you can get a hold of that newsletter simply by subscribing if you go to the website. So there's just a whole bunch of ways that we can keep in touch, and I always like to do that. Uh, in terms of uh, my personal life, um, many of you know I have gone through three cases of breast cancer. I am now going through my fourth so I want to uh, put that message out there uh, that it is important since this is uh, October is uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Um, I have been on a couple of different um, medications and evidently they weren't doing what they were supposed to do. So starting on a new one today, as a matter of fact, and I'm going to be taking chemo in the form of pills. Uh, which, uh, again, didn't even exist when all these other cases of me uh, started. And I take uh, three pills a day for 14 days, and then I, I have 14 days off, and then 14 days on again and so forth, and they're going to do a biopsy of my liver. So I say these things to you not because I want you to feel sorry for me, but because I want you to know that I keep going no matter what. And so whatever enters your life, whatever kind of... Uh, tragedy you have or family situation or, or uh, you know, something that happens that just wants to pull you down. Don't let it. We all have this stuff that comes into our lives. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just a part of uh, who we are. The fact that I can wake up every day and with a smile on my face is a key. And the fact that I go to bed at night with a smile on my face is important. I've got my two kitty cats who I adore. And uh, they spend time with me. The minute I sit down, I have one cat that the minute I sit down, whether it's in a chair or if I sit in bed, uh, she's, he's in my lap. Uh, he's my 12-year-old Siamese, my chocolate point Siamese, and I love him to death. And then I have this one-year-old, well, actually, she's a little older than maybe a year and a half now, uh, Ellie, and she is a Savannah cat, which is, I don't know if you know about Savannahs, but they're the ones, uh, mine has Siamese markings, but they've also got spots like a, like a leopard. And uh, they love water. I mean, when I turn water on, she is there. She's in the sink. She's in the shower. Uh, she loves the toilet when it flushes. I mean, she is amazing. So um, I've got my two cats. They keep me company. And of course, um, I, I keep in touch with my 
daughter who's now living away from me, my granddaughter, my great grandkids. I see my son often because I go to California every month and that's where he lives. So I get to see him a lot and he's done a lot for me. So I'm very happy about that as well. But I just want you all to know into everybody's life, something happens. I mean, we just don't live a, a charmed life with nothing challenging us. In fact, I think that makes us who we are, the challenges that we we have in our life. And so I want to stress to you that if something happens in your life, whatever it is, I mean, most of you know, I've lost a husband, I've lost a son, um, now going through this fourth case of breast cancer. I mean, there's stuff that happens all the time that you're, you're involved with friends that, that uh, depend on you that you can't uh, work with because of one thing or another. But that's called life. And if you try to hide from life, that doesn't do you very much good. And then you turn out getting worse and sicker because you're not participating in, in everyday happenings. And that's what keeps you going. That's what keeps you interesting and interested. So these are the things that I just kind of wanted you to know, because uh, if you are not a part of this, if you, if you think, you know, I live in this storied world, uh, I do. I do, but it's a story world of my own making. It's because this is how I choose to live. Uh, my son says to me all the time, Mom, I could not live the life you do. I could not keep up the pace you do. I could not travel the way you do and then bounce back. You're The next day, you're right there again. I have a tremendous energy level. And I think it's because I really do take good care of myself. I still work out all the time. I will have to tell you, uh, since all of this has happened to me, I've gone down in my weights. I used to work out with eight and 10 pound weights. Now I work out with three pound weights, five pound weights, two pound weights, even sometimes, depending on how I'm feeling. But I still work out with them. I still do my stretching, my flexibility. I still um, do the aerobic part of it so that my heart rate gets up. I do the treadmill. I do the bike. Uh, so I'm I'm very involved, and and I don't know if any of you know this, I was one of the finalists this year for the uh, Silver Sneakers Fitness Award. So uh, there were ten finalists, and I was one of them. I guess they said something like I don't know, two hundred thousand people initially applied for this, and so it was quite an honor to be the final ten. And um, uh, they gave me a beautiful party at my gym, my my HMO. Um, the uh, ins the insurance company that uh, sponsors Silver Sneakers, um, they they were there. My gym itself. I mean, they they had a wonderful party for my myself, my class. Uh, they gave me a beautiful trophy. I, it was just a very nice event. So uh, yeah, I'm still kicking. I'm still in there working out, and that's that's part of all of this as well. So I just don't want any of you to have your dreams dashed. I don't want you to feel as if you can't do something because of age. I want you to know that if you feel you can't do something, it's because of your own mindset. It's because of your own way of thinking. I have said this many times, and I'll say this again. Five minutes of negative thinking takes the body 24 hours to recover from. And you know what happens during those 24 hours. Not only does your body do a hold down type thing, I mean, you just feel tired and, and angry and upset, but you go around telling everybody else, you can't believe what happened to me. You can't believe this is happening. You can't believe this is going on. And none of those people can do anything about it. They can't uh, help you. They can't, uh, I mean, they're just not in a position to do anything. So if something happens to you that isn't of your liking, that you want to make sure, you know, uh, gets better, either contact somebody who is a specialist who can help you or to a good friend who can pump you back up again or either say, oh, you know, sorry to hear about that. Let's talk about it and you can talk it out. But remember that negative thinking is not good. Um, it's just pulls you down and it takes a long time, 24 hours to get back from it. So that's one of the reasons why I think it's so important for you to think of everything with a positive mindset. You know, I don't know what makes you smile. Um, as you know, I love animals, so they make me smile. 
I like to watch chick flicks. They make me smile. I'm not in for this heavy drama or, you know, all the horrible things that uh, you see. I don't, in fact, I don't even watch the news. I do watch Good Morning America. I want to know what's going on in the day. So I watch that in the morning and that is the only news that I watch because it's not really all news. It's, it's really the events that are happening around the world and some really positive things as well. So I do watch that. But other than that, I don't watch the news because it's not good and I don't need to listen to it. I'll find out about it. You know, somehow with the communication of today between the, the texts and the uh, notices you get on your phone and uh, the computer, you know, your Internet is giving you the latest uh, whatever is that's going on. I can tell you it makes a big difference. So uh, it's really, really important to uh, keep that positive thoughts going. And one other thing that's going to help you with positive thinking is to keep a smile on your face. You know, I have to tell you, I rarely meet strangers. Um, you know, if, if you look at somebody and smile, if you greet somebody and smile, uh, they smile back uh, and they're happy. Uh, I have never had a problem in meeting people. Of course, I talk to everybody. I'm the kind of person that, you know, what, wherever I am, I talk to people. So you're always in a situation where you're meeting people and, and, um, uh, and I've had wonderful things happen because of that. So, um, oh, my one cat is just deciding he wants to talk a little bit. That's Dylan in the background, if you hear anything. But anyway, um, I just wanted you to know that. So let's go over this again. What am I doing? I'm doing a get on TV course. So if you're interested in learning how to get on TV and you're interested in not doing it in person, but in an online course, uh, let me know. There you are, Dylan. I hear you. And, um, uh, Yes, you want to say hello to all the people who are listening to this, huh? You can say hello. Yeah, say hello. hello. That's better. Okay, that's what a Siamese sounds like. I mean, they are just talking cats. Uh, so that you can do. If you want to do it in person, we can do it. And by the way, I work on your image as well. Uh, many of you may not know, but 100 years ago, I used to own the largest modeling schools in uh, Florida, and I had my own line of makeup and all of that. So I have a great deal of background in making sure that you uh, can look your best and dressing well. And as a matter of fact, I was a TV spokesperson for a year for Clairol, and I went all over the country redoing women. I would take a woman in her 20s, one in her 40s, one in her 60s, and we would take her on a Tuesday and show how she was. And then on Wednesday, we would get new clothing and new makeup and new hairstyling and all of that. And Thursday, bring her back with her new look and do a split screen. And people loved it. And believe me, there was a huge difference. So uh, I can tell you that um, uh, that was a, a big part of my TV experience as well. So although now I do the, the three-minute segments, um, I was on for quite a bit when I was doing the uh, Clairol thing. So... Uh, we can either do it in person for a VIP day, as I mentioned, or we can do it uh, on an online course. Just let me know which one you like. I'm also working with the women over 50 on reinventing ageism and reinventing yourself. So we can work on that with a one-on-one -on -one coaching program or, again, group coaching. That's up to you. And um, if you want to get my newsletter, go to my website, spunkyoldbroad.com. You can subscribe there. And if you have questions for me, there is a submission form on my website that you can send to me, and I will definitely answer it. Or you can email me at gailcarson13 at gmail.com. So you've got a couple of different choices there. I do want to say this also. I really want to thank all of you who have been listening to the SOB broadcasts and all of the hosts that are on this network. Uh, all of them work very hard to bring you the very best of themselves. And uh, I try to bring you interesting women who I think can inspire you and, and teach you something and work with you. Uh, so I hope that you uh, have been enjoying the SOB broadcast because I enjoy doing them. And uh, the women that I have doing them also on the uh, network are just are just fantastic. I mean, I can't I can't say enough for them. They are wonderful women. And uh, and look, if you want a chance to be one of the hosts, just let me know. We'll have you on first as a guest. And if you do well as a guest, then maybe you'll transform into a host. I mean, that's what's happened to many of them who are on there. So we really appreciate that. Uh, regardless, uh, folks, be in touch. 
whether you do it online or whether you, you know, send me an email or you uh, go to the website and subscribe to the newsletter, become a part of our tribe. I really enjoy you. I enjoy having you and uh, I want to be a part of your life. So um, please, please feel free to do that. I would love to, to get to know you and uh, find out more about you. So this is Gail Carson, Dr. Gail, SOB, Spunky Old Broad, signing off.